Hey, what's going on everyone? This video I've been doing a review of the Western Digital TV Play media player. Uh, I know there are many from Western Digital. This is the one that was released in 2013. And depending on where you live, in Canada and America, it costs between $60 to $70 and the price will differ internationally. So what I'm going to do is start with the physical components and then work my way into the software, which is the most important. We'll get the remote out of the way. The remote I kind of like, uh, simply because it's really small, compact. It's very comfortable to hold and for that reason. And the remote itself is very simple to use, something very odd and rare nowadays, a simple remote. As you can see, you have the most you know, core functions, back, navigation, options, power button. Uh, there's no power button on the device itself, you must use the remote. Uh, fast forward, play, stop, all that good stuff, a Netflix shortcut app, and two other shortcuts. However, there's no keyboard on the uh, remote, unfortunately. Uh, but moving on to the device itself. Its dimensions is 105.9 by 104.9 by 27.2 millimeters, which basically translated to being really, really tiny. Here's compared to my Nexus 4 device. And over at the front, you have the remote sensor and LED notification letting you know that the device is on. If you plan to put this on a power bar, every time you turn the power bar off, this turns off. Every time you turn the power bar on, this will automatically turn on. Over on the right, you have a single USB port. At the back, you have DC for power audio video composite, HDMI output, internet, optical audio output, over on the left you have nothing, on the bottom you have your serial number and stuff, a reset button, unfortunately, unlike last year's model which had holes here, you can't wall mount this, unfortunately, okay? Now all files that are officially supported by this device, according to Western Digital, I'll put a list of all supported files and codecs in the description below, just simply expand the description and there you'll find it. Also, if you want to see how this compares to the king of media players, in my personal opinion, which is last year's Western Digital TV live media player, I'll put a link to that video comparison also in the description below. Okay, just expand it and it'll be there. Uh, for those of you who want to know how Wi-Fi signal is on this device, it's I'm not going to answer that because it's impossible to answer. It depends on your own home network. Basically, it depends on how strong is your router. Okay, what's the difference? What's the distance between your router and this media player? How many walls are in between? Stuff like that. I can't answer how strong is the Wi-Fi on this because it's impossible. There's too many variables that are different, okay? Uh, it is a well-known fact. Western Digital even shows it on big writing in their website that this device does not support DTS audio. However, it does support 5.1 surround sound Dolby Digital, okay? So it doesn't support, actually there's even Dolby Digital logo right there. So it doesn't support DTS audio, but it does support Dolby Digital and 5.1 surround sound. For those of you that aren't sure what that means, it's just a minor difference. Uh, th not a huge difference, but there is a minor difference there. Um, furthermore, it does not support MPEG-2 videos. Those video file formats are really rare nowadays, but oh, again, Western Digital has confirmed that this does not play MPEG-2 videos. Okay, so <clears throat> before I start showing you the software side of things, this should be a given, but because there's only one USB port on this device, you can't plug in a USB stick and try to use the keyboard at the same time. Obviously, it has to be one or the other. But with that said, generally the interface itself is pretty attractive. Uh, it's pretty bright and colorful due to you know the vibrant colors included in these company app logos. Uh, if you were to navigate to the far left, you the interface. I'm not really liking the sidebar here. Let's take for example Facebook. Say I wanted to find Facebook. I, I don't know where it's gonna be. There should be a caption that shows up telling you which each section does. Also, one more thing I need to mention, very important. There's no web browser built into this media player, okay? I repeat, no web browser is built in this media player. The generic screen is usually your favorites, which is right here. Pressing the options button on any icon on the remote, uh, right here. You can either choose to move something. So let's say I wanna move cinema now over here. Uh, if I press the options button again on the remote, you can unpin it from the favorites, so it'll get rid of it. Yeah, get out of here. Uh, and the last thing I want to show you is that you can also block the app. The first time you do this, it'll tell you to type in a password, then retype it again to confirm you sp spelled the password correctly. So it's pretty good if you don't want kids or someone accessing a certain app. You know, if, if you go all the way up, this is where you have an option to show all the apps. Pause the video at any point you want. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to read them all out. But yes, there's also Sling Player. If you have a Sling Box, you can use Sling Player. Um, I'm just going to go through them quickly. You can pause the video and just look at this as a whole. But generally speaking, you also have Western Digital offers. I've yet to see a single offer show up so far. 
And while you're on the screen, if you go all the way up, this time this icon has changed to app usage. If you press it, it'll tell you this is how much storage space have, has been used thanks to apps. I don't know what's the point of this because you can't, you can't download your own apps. There's no app store from Western Digital or nothing. The only way you can get a new app is if Western Digital releases a firmware update and then it includes a new app. Uh, if, again, if you go to the top, you have alerts. This is basically where certain alerts show up, including new firmware updates if you have an internet connection. I'm currently using an internet wire. Settings. I'm not going to go through every setting here because this is pretty generic stuff. You can change the aspect ratio, HDMI, uh, 1080p, whatnot. You can change the connection from wired to wireless. This is very boring, boring generic stuff. That's what I'm skipping through. Time zone, your country, uh, screensaver. Here, if you choose... Uh, background and you plug in a USB stick with photos on it you can indeed change the wallpaper background right now you have this kind of galaxy with mountains at the bottom you can indeed change that okay I want to make sure you guys are aware of that because that's a nice feature to customize uh, I can choose your playback style you know nothing really to see here uh, operation energy save mode and of course about the system and its firmware and all the other boring stuff if you want to get out of the entire apps listing and go back to your you know favorite section and pre uh, you know divided up sections press the back button on the remote here and you go back to your default page now what I'm going to do is demonstrate the more popular apps for you like Netflix, Hulu Plus and YouTube so let's get into that right now okay so upon Netflix startup you have the choice to go to Netflix or Netflix for kids generally starting up the Netflix app is really really slow um, it's something that's been problem with most Western digital media players, but you have your generic sections like popular, recommended, recently watched, and of course, yes, it does support uh, HD videos. Once the Netflix app is up and running, for the most part, it's pretty quick. Of course, that depends on your um, internet speed, but I can I can honestly say that yeah, there are HD videos. So Thor, for example, what I'm gonna be demonstrating for you guys. Um, it works pretty darn good. It's not the clearest HD quality ever, but if you're familiar with Netflix in general, you'll notice that they never have the best HD quality ever. But for the most part, yeah, it's it looks pretty good. It's pretty sharp. The first few seconds will take a little bit while to load. It'll be grainy, but as your internet connection, you know, communicates with the Netflix server, you'll notice that the picture gets generally better quickly over time. Okay, so whereas Netflix takes almost about 40 seconds to start up, Hulu Plus takes about 15 seconds to start up so it's a lot faster and responsive and the, the interface is pretty clean and okay you can search through all their stuff um, again because hooking up a keyboard isn't the best experience because there's only one USB port, uh, port and the remote doesn't have an onboard on remote keyboard you might be forced to use the Western Digital remote app for Android and iPhone I'm not going to demonstrate that for you guys because the app is absolutely horrendous. It's a terrible experience. The app is very clunky for Android. I don't know about iPhone and iOS, but for Android it's bad. But anyway, so I'm going to go to say my subscriptions. You can, you know, see your subscriptions and stuff like that, your queue. Uh, one thing I noticed that the only show I can't get to work is Simpsons. You must view it through the Hulu website. You can't just do it through an app like this. The video quality on Hulu Plus is active, like, HD right away. Whereas Netflix needs a couple of seconds to start up and catch up, Hulu Plus, I noticed that if the show's HD, it'll play HD right off the bat. If the show's older, like, say, older episodes of South Park, obviously you're not going to get HD episodes. But, you know, using the left and right button is the main commands used to fast forward and, you know, pause and stuff like that. You'll notice that the interface is generally pretty easy to use. Okay, so the YouTube app is actually the fastest to start up uh, of the three that I'm demonstrating for you guys. It took maybe less than 10 seconds to start up. Unfortunately, for some bizarre reason, Western Digital decided to go back with their YouTube Lean Back app. On the Western Digital TV Live, the media player from last year, which I compare, that one has a dedicated Western Digital modified version of uh, the YouTube app. It was much better. I don't know why they decided to use this, but unfortunately they did. Um, so here's, this is how you navigate with the remote. If you don't have a keyboard or if you're not using the Android app, it's pretty annoying. But as I said, the Android app is horrible. It doesn't type sometimes. It's laggy and unresponsive. So when I finish typing, we'll continue. Okay, so an annoying thing is that as I'm typing this, YouTube doesn't generate, you know, what, it doesn't try to generate a list of trying to guess what I'm typing. And there's no submit button anywhere here, you'll notice. I just stopped typing for about three seconds and then it submits to YouTube that, hey, search this up for me. So it's not a great experience. The YouTube app is pretty bad. I wish they had the old Western Digital uh, 
modified YouTube app, it was much better. YouTube does play in HD. I can confirm that. I can see with my own eyes. So the YouTube app, it has its flaws, but for the most part, when you're watching a video, it's extremely responsive and general startup time is pretty quick. Okay, so the last app I'm going to show you is games. Uh, what, you, what I just liked it was Funspot. Funspot, you must have an internet connection. It takes you to a general game section. Sorry, my camera's out of focus. All you can play is simple games like chess and stuff like that. Nothing worth even showing you guys. But at least you have an idea that you have like 2D games. Not 3D, but 2D. You can kind of see the p preview images there. Let's continue on. Okay, so what I'm going to do for you guys now is play something off my uh, USB stick. Here you can select My Storage. That's where you get access to your stuff. And while you're here, what you can actually do is select different sources of uh, media playback. So this is my USB stick. If I go up, you'll see uh, filter and sort, change source. Change source allows you to select uh, maybe if your PC is hooked up. This is my PC. Here's a problem about network playback. You cannot play back any generally shared media file. The only way you can stream something back through Windows Media Player, I'm not sure about Mac and all that other stuff, but when, through Windows, it must be through the Windows Media Center. Basically, in order to play anything through here from your computer, uh, if it, this is a Windows PC, it must be shared through Windows Media Center. And the unfortunate part with Windows Media Center is that it doesn't support MKV files. So you can't stream MKV files from your home computer. Okay, so I just want to let you guys know one thing. Uh, the Media Player does support DLNA playback. This option right here is actually my Nexus 4. That's my phone. Uh, your experiences will differ depending on what you're streaming. If it's a picture or video and high, high, how high the quality is. And of course, um, the higher quality it is, the stronger Wi-Fi connection you need. So it'll differ for each person. Uh, the, the playback, how smooth it is. You know, playing MKV files and stuff, it works just fine. And as I said, I can confirm that 5.1 surround sound works despite DTS audio not working. Uh, the max you can fast forward is 16x, which is pretty darn fast. If you want to go even faster, you hit the fast forward button, then the skip track button, and it skips in 10 minute intervals instead. An important note I want to mention to you guys, I have hooked up a four terabyte hard drive to this media player. It does read. It took almost five minutes to read everything on the hard drive. I kid you not, that's how long it took. But when it did, it wasn't that great because what happens is I opened a folder with maybe 180 folders worth of home videos, home pictures. Every time I opened it up, the media player will give up this pop-up message saying, there's no media in this folder and you have to go back and it kicks you back to the root directory of the hard drive. So it can read a four terabyte hard drive, but it doesn't work properly. Okay, so it's time to break down this review into its final verdict. If I had to give this media player a score, I would give it a three out of a five. And here are the pros. Basically, the interface is really simple. I love it. It's th the more simpler it is, the, the better it is. Nobody wants a complicated system. I know that I said the sidebar here with the favorites and stuff isn't the you know, the most clarified and easy to understand. But after a few minutes, honestly, you get used to it right away. Personally, what I just choose to do is use my favorites uh, menu, or you can just always choose to show all the apps at the same time. The interface itself is extremely quick. It's a big upgrade from last year's Western Digital Media, Media Player. The interface is a lot more snappy. Opening up Netflix, Hulu, and YouTube are much, much faster than before. Generally speaking, the media player is faster as a whole. The price point is also another bonus. Depending on where you live, as mentioned, it can range from $60 to $70. And of course, that price might vary internationally. And of course, if you want, I personally don't recommend it, but some people will see it as a pro, so I'll mention it. You always have the option of using the Western Digital Remote app for an iOS or Android device. And lastly, it plays the most current top file formats. And what I mean by current top is MKV, MP4, uh, generally, you know, any 1080p files and even H.264 uh, Kodak. Of course, this media player is with its cons. It does not support DTS audio. Again, it supports 5.1 surround sound audio, but no DTS. My biggest negative point, this is a huge, huge negative point and where it got a really low score due to this reason, is due to its poor network playback. It can only play files through a network if it's shared through Windows Media Center. Unfortunately, as mentioned, I do like a simple remote, but the remote doesn't have an onboard keyboard. And that brings to another con. Another con is it only has one USB port, so you can't plug in a USB stick and a keyboard at the same time. And furthermore, M MPEG-2 file formats aren't that popular nowadays. 
but again, it's it's not supported. And here's a couple more big problems, which might be another deal breaker to some people. As mentioned before, there's no browser. You cannot browse the internet as you wish. Furthermore, you cannot download additional apps. You're stuck with using whatever Western Digital provides you, and that's it. Generally speaking, it's a pretty decent media player for people who just need a simple one that does most of you know what they would want from a media player. For home theater enthusiasts like myself and need network streaming and all that other good stuff, avoid this media player. Maybe stick with the Western Digital TV Live or something else a bit more expensive. You might have to spend a bit more money. If you found this video useful, check out my website in the description below. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.